All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to Channel Anderson, and welcome to today's engine mount transmission mount video on a C43 AMG. Here we are in the garage, whole lot going on, but specifically right now, we are focusing on this thing. From the time I got this thing, it's been fantastic, it's in really good shape, but one thing right off the bat that I knew was gonna need replacing was the engine mounts. And thankfully, you guys know that I know the perfect engine mount for this car. From Creative Steel, these are the Lima Vibes, they're newer style mounts. We've put these in pretty much everything we can at this point, and uh, this car is no exception. So. It's gonna be getting a set of these as well as their transmission mount, which is sitting over here. This is their normal automatic. Uh, it's a gray polyurethane, which I think is around a 60A. And then I have another one sitting around that's gonna be going in the 190 for the six speed manual. That's gonna have a chassis mounted shifter that has the quote unquote Anderson special of a black uh, polyurethane bushing, which I think is closer to like 75A or so. So a little more stiffness in that one to account for the chassis mounted shifter. But the other one will hold up just fine for the automatic. This thing may be six speed swapped at a certain time, but we'll get into that down the road if it happens. All right, to cover things quickly, how we're gonna do this. Uh, first off, tools, assortment of 16 millimeter. It could be a socket too if you got room. Um, I might even use a socket if these don't work, but we'll start out with these. Try and then the bottom bolt um, on the engine mounts are gonna be 13 millimeters, which you can reach really easy with just a regular 13 millimeter socket and extension. So get this thing jacked up now and I'll be able to instruct you guys a little better as we're going. And if you're interested in these mounts, whether engine, transmission mounts, they make them for a bunch of different chassis and all of them are fairly cross compatible but uh, check with them on their website and you can use my code Anderson10 for a bit off your order. Save a little bit of money, get the best mounts in the game, never have to do them again because these last forever, you know, win, win, win. So anyways, if you guys are interested. Hey guys, pause my Led Zeppelin so I don't get copywritten, but uh, other camera decided to go on the fritz. So we are switching to the GoPro and I wanted to show you guys something that I thought was a good bit of a life hack. Uh, on the passenger side engine mount. So if you can see up here, I'll grab it and show you guys. We have just a basic 3H ratchet with a somewhat shallow 16 millimeter socket on it. And what I was able to do is once this is on here, I basically, when it was fully tight, I could not get it to budge using my Hulk strength alone. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> But I did find a bit of a life hack by using just a long flat blade screwdriver or some type of pry tool or something to leverage that you got laying around. And what I did basically is put this as close to kind of where it will go in between. Oh, it's already loose now, but where it will go in between um, to give good leverage against the exhaust manifold and basically just pry this in and pull and you got a good amount of fulcrum or leverage on it and now this thing is fully loose so um i want to get the top ones loose first before i start doing the bottom ones because those are the easy ones so that's crack free i'm going to go ahead and try the driver's side i'll figure out what works best and let you guys know once i figure it out all right guys driver's side life hack now same same but different essentially we used same leverage technique, but this time opposite. So our same ratchet sitting like so. Where are you, Bolt? Okay, there we go. All right. So ratchet sitting there. What I did is it wasn't a good enough fulcrum point to go off of the, um, the actual engine block mount or stand. So what I did instead was go off of, if you can see, I'm going to get this out of the way, but that little ear on the motor, as well as basically the corner of uh, that exhaust flange right there. So you kind of get your screwdriver, pry it underneath here, 
sitting on top of that little square ledge. Pry it up a little bit, you'll hear a nice little crack, bolt coming loose, and then from there you can start kind of climbing your way up the exhaust flange and uh, getting all the way. So now that one's all the way loose, now we can loosen up our bottom bolts, which are 13 millimeters, and they sit inside of the subframe right there. And once we got that, we can start lifting up our motor. So, can't wait till I have a lift, guys. That'll be nice. All right, guys, both bottom bolts are out now as well. They look like so. Just a uh, 13 millimeter bolt with a big washer on it. Keep those around. I have the engine ready to be uh, lifted up with a piece of wood underneath the oil pan. And fun fact, 202 bumper. At least the C43, I don't think my C36 has this, but it's labeled on the bottom. I thought that was kind of interesting. Anyways, we are going to lift this up and uh, see how easy or not our mounts fall out. Or if they do. Try not to go too far. Okay, definitely. Oh, and I need to get my <laughs> need to get my upper bolt out. I forgot to take those all the way out. Okay, let me do that. Hold on. All right, upper bolt. That's what it looks like, and I'm taking a video so that I can remember the orientation of the heat shield. So that's exactly as it sits. And uh, let me go ahead and do the other side. All right, guys, a little dark on this side because my light's over on the other. But driver's side was much easier to get out because it's collapsed, and you can see the fluid pretty much spilled all out of it. Um, so what I'm gonna do, since I got this one out, I'm gonna go ahead and put the creative steel mount on the driver's side first. I will rest the engine and then move the jack more to that side of the motor to lift that side up. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, and quick rudimentary comparison side by side. Here's the mount you can see literally exploded already. This thing is free moving, which is not supposed to be basically spinning. This can probably pop right out of here, I tried. And yeah, all the fluid, hydraulic fluid, for those that don't know, filled is gone. So side by side, size-wise or height-wise, these are pretty similar. Um, the 11 by might be a little bit taller, to be honest. We'll see once we try to get it in there. Um, but I think the 11 by is pretty close to stock size um but I, I do believe they sit a little bit lower in the engine bay so we'll see wish me luck i'm trying to fit this in there <sighs> pin. all right guys so i don't know how much you guys can see but the pin on this locates with the pin up there on the uh, stand that's on the motor so we're gonna try to do our best and just line that up and we know if we get that lined up, the rest of it should be okay. So let's first snake this past here. All right, we are clear. So let's go ahead. It's hard to tell exactly where my pin is. I think we're pretty close. Um, what I can try to do is start that, I don't know, two strategies, I guess. You can start that pin uh, or start the bolt on top with that pin and then drop it down just so you know you're a little bit aligned. Or I can bolt this bottom and try to drop the motor down onto this. So let me play around with this, see what I should do, and I'll be back. Rubber plant, you're a G, but I got to pause you real quick. All right. So, we have our engine mount, I'll show you guys in a second, but we have the driver's side all situated, top bolt, bottom bolt secured, pin in place, good to go. So, tension is off the motor. What I'm gonna do now is just slide this over a little bit. There's a little bit left, okay. Slide this over so that it's more so focusing on the passenger side, and then, Let's lift this up again. Let's straighten this out a little bit. Okay. 
Alrighty. Okay, let's go for it now. Okay, passenger side mount out without a breeze. And this one, like typical, it's in a little bit better shape than the driver's side, but you can see it's on its way out. It didn't leak all of its fluid yet, probably some, but uh, still, you know, kind of intact. But I mean, come on now, this is so much better. So let's go ahead, throw this in, call it a day for the engine mounts. All right, guys, going in, in a bit of an awkward position. Okay, it's kind of in place. Let's see where I'm at real quick. Okay, not even close. Oh, let's adjust here. Okay, what am I caught on? All right, get this out of the way. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, now she's sitting where she is supposed to. Let's get the pin. Where is the pin? Yes, pin is lined up for the most part. Okay, now begins the coercing of the bolts and make sure things are lined up. So I'll do that real quick. Catch you guys after. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just like that, we're all done. Tighten both sides. Good to go. So now we're gonna move on to the trans mount. All right guys, beautiful creative steel trans mount ready to go in. Got our same 60 millimeter, 13 millimeter socket. Should ratchet. I'm working in tight quarters here, so uh, I'm not gonna bother jacking up the car. Even more to do this, I can get to it. It's just a little bit hard to film for you guys. But essentially, two 60 millimeter bolts on top there, two 13 millimeter bolts on the bottom, and uh, need a trans support of some kind so i'll put the jack under here piece of wood and get this thing resurrected swapped out all right guys tight squeeze under there so i'm showing you out here uh this trans mount doesn't look too bad to be honest it's probably been replaced um normally they're like very much sagging down this one yeah still looks like it's in pretty good shape but creative steel one is much better and last much longer i've had one running for basically four years and they still both engine and trans mounts perform like new so and look like new so anyways that's out let's get the other one in <laughs> oh guys right when i was gonna show you the transmission mount the light died hold on all right guys now you can see the mount sitting in place sorry the light died but yeah you get the gist 60 millimeters and 30 millimeters back in a nice fresh logo sitting out back so man i'm excited all right guys and just like that she is all put back together hour and a half worth of work or so and uh it's gonna be driving a lot better speaking of driving i think we should finish out this video with at least some quick thoughts and uh drives since i gotta go to work tomorrow and i'll take this thing with me so catch you guys manana oh and of course can't go without showing all of the tools that came out during the job you always think you're gonna use like, you know, four tools and then you get done with a big job like this and you got a pile of different things on the floor. So yeah, that's the array of things that I used or didn't use, but just brought out anyways. So there you go. Catch you in the morning. All right, you guys. Good morning. My morning voice is on because I haven't spoken yet, but uh, we're about to head out, go on our way to work. And I figured I would give you guys a first start for this thing so we could see. You remember this morning when I was saying something and then the camera just shut off? Yeah, well, the camera died. So <laughs> we're back after work. I was gonna show you guys the first start this morning, but I didn't. Thankfully, not much change. It feels just like the car should. You don't notice any NVH or anything like that. Literally sitting here, no one would ever know that this car has basically solid polyurethane engine mounts. And uh, I'm glad about that. So. People always ask me, that's like one of the 
most common questions people ask me about the creative seal mounts does it cause a lot of vibration is it super harsh and the answer is no and they've shown videos on their channel you can go check out on a c63 with the pico scope data on my channel we've done the mounts on the c36 that showed the pico scope data so the data does not lie in that case and driving it around idling all that stuff does not lie it feels fantastic and it feels way better actually because the dynamics change you're no longer getting that torque lift of the v8 which kind of in essence will pull the car to the right a little bit when you're really getting on throttle and launching the car that was the thing that i noticed immediately installing these on my c55 years back was when i would pin it the car did not want to all of a sudden veer to the right it would just go straight as an arrow and that's what you notice same thing i noticed right off the bat driving this thing out of the house this morning i was like man feels really good dynamics have changed it just feels planted and solid and obviously it didn't help that our oem mounts were shot but even a fresh pair of oems and a fresh pair of these i would take these all day long um, for the longevity the performance price versus paying over and over for the oem mounts that you're going to replace every 50 to 100 thousand miles if that if you're driving spiritedly they can go out and as little as like 20 to 30 thousand miles um, even the black series ones i've seen people see, uh, have them fail at like 40 to 60 thousand miles if you're driving of them regularly and you know somewhat spiritedly so anyways enough talking let's get on the road i am uh, on my way home so i will just cruise with you guys as we get there show you how the car feels i guess as best as i can i don't have my window mount so i'll be holding you guys but yeah see how it feels i should point out too the thing that i noticed most about the bad engine mounts we just took out was when it was in park it would have a noticeable basically like just not happy vibration coming from the tunnel and you could feel it in the seat and on your foot on the pedals so that's a telltale sign your engine mounts are going bad a lot of times when you're in park and if it goes away as soon as like you go into uh drive or neutral or it's opposite it's happening when you're sitting at idle and drive but it goes away when you go to neutral or park that's typical signs you got either bad engine mount and trans mount or one of the other so that is all gone which is awesome so yeah let's get to driving All right, you guys, so one thing to point out right off the bat, again, like I said this morning, leaving the house, just the dynamics of the car definitely felt different. Um, and one of those things is the throttle response feels a little better, just being a little more instantaneous. And because the engine doesn't move, it just makes the car feel quicker in a way um just because it stays so much more planted and it's going straight and not like fighting you in one direction i think that the trade-off of that is, is this naturally kind of makes the car feel a little peppier so i'm not like trying to paint these as if they're gonna magically give you horsepower or something like that i'm not saying that but it just feels a lot more planted it's kind of the same way how you know suspension can make a car feel faster if you have it set up right because it'll make it you know handle better or corner better or hook better uh, it's the same type of scenario i guess especially when you're coming off of those old tired engine mounts and you go to something as planted as these you're going to notice those little trade-offs holy smokes what is that guy doing i don't know if you guys saw that but somebody was coming straight at me okay well um other things to know the transmission definitely feels a lot more crisp. We did trans mount as well last night, you guys saw. So the combination right now is kind of as good as you can get when it comes to the engine and transmission being in place. The next thing in line would be obviously, you know, trying to uh, play around with some subframe bushings or differential bushings, but those are probably still in decent shape. They don't typically wear out like the uh, engine and trans mounts do on these cars. So they're, they're probably a little tired, but nothing in the same way as engine transmount. And actually the transmount we took off last night, you guys saw was 
in pretty good shape still so the polyurethane one is still an improvement upon that like i said apples to apples the oem stuff brand new oem stuff even brand new like black series oem stuff versus the creative steel i still think creative steel gets the edge every time whether you break it down by cost efficiency or performance uh, there's just no scenario where i'm going to pay money for those other options versus just buying the creative steel ones that's just my point blank period truth of my experience uh, having them on all the cars that i have them on now so that's my two cents again if you guys are interested i'm not a salesman for them in any way shape or form but i do have a discount code that they offer me just because they know you guys are interested and they support me and the channel so um, yeah if you guys want to you can use my code it's andersen10 and that'll get you a little bit off of your order if you do decide to go with these so i'm gonna drive enjoy my day right here while the days are still full of sunshine and uh, i'll catch up with you guys in a little bit when we got some space to uh do some pulls all right guys got nobody around us do a quick launch see how this thing does take esp off horsepower a little v8 it's a fun car definitely fun one thing I would point out guys uh, before I forget the 722.6 is in this car I mean 722 the 722.6 is great in general as far as five-speed automatics of this era goes it's one of the best the thing that this car could really benefit from is if it had the paddles or the uh, tiptronic shift where you could pull the lever left and right like a little bit later models got on these trans so definitely takes away from the experience a bit it still shifts okay i mean it's a robust transmission but it would be nice to have the paddles here it feels like it needs them like it feels like they should be there on this car of all cars it'd be nice to be clicking the paddles but yeah it's probably better with a six speed anyway so i'm not gonna give it too much flack but just my thoughts as i'm driving back home now guys there she sits she needs a bath big time all this dirt from raining and driving around here in the dust but yeah i think as far as performance goes very happy with the mounts as always this thing is up next to get it set it already has a transmission mount but it's getting the engine mount so probably pull that into the garage soon and uh yeah the other ones are already pretty much sitting pretty with all the setup so this thing fantastic little car all right, you guys, well, that is it. Creative seal box, one down, one more to go on the CLK, but super happy that job is done on the C43. Definitely made a world of difference. Take that guy out for some cruises later. Again, if you guys want, go ahead, feel free to use my code, andersen 10 get a little discount on your mounts, transmission mount, engine mount, whatever else you wanna buy. They support a lot of chassis too, so go check them out, see what they got. Maybe something for one of your cars rides, so. Enjoy. I'll catch you guys soon, hopefully in a video on this thing or something else. So anyways, peace.